What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back here with another video. Today we are doing our five round mock draft. Now I know that some of you guys said five is a little too much, but I got a lot of requests from you guys for doing actually five rounds. So I'm going to try it out this week. Let me know what you guys think about that. Then we're going to do something very experimental here. So please, if you guys are new and if you guys are now the oldies, stay with me because we've never done trades before. And I paid 50 bucks. I mean, yeah, I got to look at the scouting draft shit and everything, but I paid 50 bucks to be able to do some trades for y'all. All right. So show some love by hitting that like button, subscribing, commenting down below. You guys have been doing a great job at all that. I love it. We're over 900 subs, which is amazing. Almost going to be at a thousand. Hopefully we can hit it after this video. So try to get that the goal, guys. If you have friends, family, anybody who loves football, who might be interested in this shit, why not? Right. Uh, I always damn well appreciate it. So of course, Stick with me because this video might be a little bit longer than usual. A little bit longer, Alex. You always do 40 minutes anyways. Well, just stick with me. Stick with me, y'all. Now, first pick. This is going to be an easy one. I don't think you guys need too much analysis on this. Trevor Lawrence is going to be the obvious pick. Sam Darnold just hasn't been it. He has these flashes, which might be able to get him some trade value. And unfortunately, guys, the trade. The only reason why I haven't been doing trades is because you can't include players in them. Like, Sam Darnold could be traded for... Let's assume a next year second, right? Uh, or maybe a this year third. So that's not really going to be an option at the moment. So uh, bear with me. These are all going to be pick for pick trades. But Trevor Lawrence, standard six foot six guy, biggest red flags on him. And I talked to a 49er scout. I'm not going to drop his name because I don't know if he wants me to. But uh, he might be coming on the channel sometime soon. Another little fun little thing for you guys. Um, talked to an actual 49er scout currently right now, and he was talking about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields being actually really fucking close because T-Law likes to stare down his target. And he said that's a big thing because, I mean, the guys in the NFL, the safeties and stuff, they can read when you're just staring a dude down. The whole entire point is to look off a target because safeties in the NFL have a higher IQ. However, he has the arm and he usually has the wide receivers to do it. That's a big red flag. However, I think Trevor just does that because he knows his guys are better and he knows that uh, his arm talent can get it there. So I think he could adjust. That's not going to be a huge red flag because I believe he can adjust. And I think the NFL believes he can adjust as well. He's hinted at being the next Andrew Luck, being the next Peyton Manning. One of those dudes who you just can't pass up on. And this next pick, another easy one, Justin Fields. Again, being neck and neck, in my opinion, they're growing closer and closer. Justin Fields is looking like a true commander of the team. Uh, he looks extremely pissed off when he makes mistakes which is a great sign because it looks like he actually wants to improve on them. Maybe just because he wants a better draft spot, but I mean, we can't really go into full psychology mode here. I mean, I ain't no, I ain't no shrink. I'm going to be straight up with y'all, but Justin Fields is a very talented guy, has all the, has all the traits that you want. And, um, according, according to some guys on the NFL, apparently Justin Fields might be better. So, uh, I don't really believe that per se. I, it's just, it's a, it's a, potential thing we all know these are going to be the top two picks speaking of the top three picks again no trades yet this is a pretty obvious one Penny Suell like you need all the line help in the world for the Bengals you got your quarterback you have some weapons you're going to be doing solid you need to protect your quarterback so you can at least get the ball there slash survive enough to get the ball there now you might think Cowboys this could be a good trade down spot right because we can get JC Horn I think that's a good idea however I'm not I'm not fully buying it. I know Jerry Jones, he's sur he sure as hell doesn't like the trade down. In my opinion, I don't think he does. Correct me if I'm wrong there. However, this is the one thing I do remember him saying. He says, uh, I've always overpaid. He always overpays for, for good people. And I think here's a spot where he can overpay as well. Like overpaying, obviously, they're talking about contracts. Patrick Sertan and Trayvon Diggs work together as the one of the best dynamic duos in college history at cornerbacks. They're just one and two. They're freaking like yin and yang. You can bring that to a team that has four corners on contract year. That's a huge deal. We already know how much Dallas has been torn a new one this year on their defense. Micah Parsons could be a great replacement for Sean Lee. He could offer some extra pass rush. But I legitimately think that this is a spot where, you, I mean, Patrick Sertan, he probably ain't no Jalen Ramsey, right? But he could be. He has the size. He has the speed. He has the build. He's not going to wow you in like anything towards the best of all time, but he's like a 9.5 out of 10 in a lot of fucking categories. I think this is, this is an obvious pick for me. I'm going to be perfectly happy if I'm a Cowboys fan because Dak's going to come back. The line's going to be back to health again. And then our defense, we don't really want to spend all that money on like guys like Jordan Lewis. So getting Patrick Sertan in there, getting Trayvon Diggs, 
instant chemistry is going to help out Patrick Sertan a lot. And a big factor we don't always talk about, when cornerbacks get to practice against really damn good wide receivers in practice, it makes them better. Think about Bill's corners, who are nobodies, who get to train against tra- uh, Stephon Diggs and guys like that. It's 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 a thing. It's a very big thing. So Patrick Sertan, uh, definitely going to be the beneficiary of all that. Now, Chargers, you lose the number one tackle. You lose the number one corner. And there is the third quarterback on the board. If we want to look at the guys on the board, you have the Panthers at the next spot, who are for sure going to be taking a quarterback. Without a doubt, they want Zach Wilson, right? You have teams like the 49ers, who damn well could want a guy like Zach Wilson. But at the same time, they could be taking a quarterback. Corner, not quarterback. So that could be a potential threat to the Chargers, right? Uh, again, there's there's some picks in here. I mean, even the Eagles could be wanting to trade up for Chase in fear of the Dolphins. I think that the Panthers are going to be like, dude, we cannot pass up on a guy like Zach Wilson. It's one spot trade up. We don't have to give up that much value. So let's rock it, dude. We're going to be going. So right now we are going to go to the Panthers. We are trading up with the Chargers. One spot to be able to pick a quarterback. So right now, um, this is going to, this is going to be obviously like we're going to see, obviously it says very likely. So we're going to be putting in some picks here to see if we're able to do it. So a A first and a fifth is able to do it. A first and a sixth is able to do it. So right there, once I see the very likely to likely, that's where I don't like it, all right? So guys, we're going to be trying to do this pick. Obviously, if it doesn't work, we're going to be going up one. You guys are going to see actually the trades for the first time. So the Chargers are trading back one spot. You might be like, Alex, what the fuck? One spot, dude? Really? Yeah, just watch. Chargers, you're a young team. You're going to want to accumulate picks. I mean, you look at the freaking Dolphins. They're doing a great job. They traded away some of their best assets. They have some amazing pick values. Again, guys could be traded in this draft. Everything's going to change. Remember, in the offseason, we're going to be doing free agent predictions. We're going to do mock drafts based off of that. All this is going to change, guys. But what's not going to change is Zach Wilson going to the Panthers. Now, Chargers, again, you're stuck in a spot. You're like, oh, shit. You know, like, you know, we only got, yeah, we only got, what, like a six-round pick extra to trade back one spot, but now you get to trade back more. So there's a guy like Micah Parsons on the board, right? We can look at a team like the Giants to trade up for that. You can look at the Eagles to trade up for that. Jamar Chase is on the board. And I'm telling y'all, Jamar Chase is going to be worth a lot of money. And you can look at the Falcons who might be afraid of Julio retiring, right? There's a there's rumors out there that Julio could be gone. You look at the Dolphins, who they could be, yeah, they're probably going to be going, excuse me, a guy like Jalen Waddle. However, they could be going a guy like Jamar Chase, who is better than Justin Jefferson, who's been playing amazingly. We're trading back with the Eagles. So this is going to be, we're not going to be going pick crazy here, right? So obviously the Eagles are going to be trading up for Jamar Chase. It's going to be a little bit interesting. Chargers are just going to be getting some good value, all right? So we're going to be looking at another sixth round. Very unlikely. So now the picks are starting to become more unlikely. So we still have a very unlikely. And we have likely with a third round pick. So let me know, Eagles fans, if you're going to think about this. After some careful consideration, you guys do not want to be trading uh, a third round pick when you guys do have some big ass needs, right? So we are going to be trying to do this trade, a first this year, a third next, and a fifth this year for this sixth overall pick. If we don't get accepted, we have one more shot at it. And if it doesn't work, it works. So you guys are giving up a little bit of draft capital in the future. However, Jalen Hurts looks like a solid dude. You need to get him some weapons, all right? Micah Parsons could definitely be a guy who you do target. However, Jamar Chase is going to be the pick here. Trading up and being able to get him is kind of a huge need. Now, uh, Falcons, you guys could trade back as well. We're not going to be doing that. We're not going to trade crazy here. The NFL draft is not like that. Jamar Chase is worth this pick. But at this point, this is where you do need some pass rush. Tack McKinley didn't work out. Quiddy Pay by far, is better than Greg Rousseau, in my opinion exponentially exponentially Greg Rousseau is a raw prospect you need a guy like Cam Jordan Vaughn Miller to be able to get your maximum potential Quiddy Pay has done a very good job this year he's te- taken a huge step up and while Michigan's been falling he's been rising that's a very good sign because it shows that he's doing it and he's not a beneficiary of his team letting him do the job kind of like Greg Rousseau getting 15 sacks by way of a lot of times coverage. So Dolphins, this is a spot where you're like, shit, do we go Jalen Waddle? Do we go Devontae Smith? Or do we go Micah Parsons? 
if I'm going to be honest with you guys, this wide receiver class looking pretty fucking good. You don't let Micah Parsons get past you because the the Giants, they honestly could take Micah Parsons. We're going to be honest, they'll probably take Micah Parsons. So we're going to be going Micah right here, just getting you guys some extra, some amazing value. He offers pass rushing. He offers that uh, true leadership as well. He's an excellent player. One of my favorite guys in the entire class and a favorite of most people. At this spot, this is where you can guy, get a guy like Farley, right? There's nobody on the board where teams are going to be salivating, dying to be able to get another dude, right? Caleb Farley is going to be worth this pick. So Virginia Tech, Caleb Farley, arguably he's one of my top 10 dudes in the class just based off his potential. If it weren't for injury, he'd be easily top five. He is. He has the speed, he has the size, he has the press, he has everything you need. This corner core needs some extra youth. You have the mentors there. Let's rock it. That's going to be an amazing option. Now, a team like the Giants that are so young, that might be getting a new quarterback in the future because you don't know about Danny Dimes' future. They could be looking at some good pass rush. The pass rush has been pretty brutal. I'm going to be straight up. The interior defensive line, amazing. Gregory Rousseau, he kind of fits as more of that linebacker edge hybrid. So maybe more like a 3-4 three, three, outside linebacker. But he has positional versatility because if you put on some more pounds, he is a really good pass rusher. He needs to develop a little bit more. But I think this is a great team for him to do that on. You got, you have guys like Leonard Williams who are able to use their size to their advantage. Gregory Rousseau is going to be a very interesting new prospect to this team. Uh, you could be going to Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith here. I think that's a little bit too close to what you already have in Darius Slayton. I'm not a huge fan of it personally. Usually I'd be going Jeremiah Wusu kamora here because that's a great pick too. But with the amount of potential Gregory Rousseau has, I don't think you can give that up. So we're going to be going Gregory Rousseau here. Uh, again, I haven't done uh, a Giants video yet. So uh, if we're going to be 100% honest here, I might, like, I don't know exactly how your cap situation is. So if you guys want to be, like, brutal down the comment section, by all means, go ahead. And now on to the Lions. The Lions, you can't get up this position. You have four dudes on contract for wide receiver, if not five. So that's kind of brutal. So right now it's down to Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith has had... An insane year, insane year, to the point where can you give up on a guy like this who is just able to take off when Jalen Waddle goes behind, uh, gets left behind? I don't think so. Jalen Waddle is a great, great wide receiver. Honestly, he was the best dude, uh, best wide receiver through four weeks in college football, hands down. But Devonte Smith showed that he's able to play with a really good target in Jalen Waddle, but he's also able to pick it up and keep the team rolling when Jalen Waddle's not there. So that's a huge thing, especially this last week when uh, when Mac Jones didn't look too hot. I think that he was the one who looked really good and was able to lift the team. He's carrying the team, and that's a guy who you kind of want on your roster. So I like Devontae Smith here. He's not built to be a number one wide receiver, guys. If you guys want to continue telling me that, he is not built to be a number one. He's 175 pounds. Uh, let, let's just double check on that. He's 175 pounds at 6'1". Are you going to have him going up against a guy like Jalen Ramsey? No. You need him to be a true, he's a true number one threat, but you need a big threat on the outside to distract a bigger dude. He's just, he's going to get manhandled by these monster corners. Now, Niners, this is a spot where you guys can't give up on JC Horn. You guys do need the cornerback help. Uh, your team will be fine. You could use a quarterback, but that's okay. Now the Broncos, this is an interesting spot because normally JC Horn would have felt like, oh shit, okay. Like we could have potentially traded back with the Giants here to get JC Horn, but Man, like, what do you do now, right? You don't need a wide receiver, right? That, that's straight up. You don't need a wide receiver. Don't need a tight end. You might need a quarterback. This is going to be telltale sign for the next couple weeks. You very well might need a quarterback. You don't need a tackle, even though you have one on contract here. So this is a spot where I sniff a trade back. Again, you guys might want Trey Lance, but he just had, I mean, Drew Locke just had a really, really good game. Like a very good game against, um, I'm bugging who it was against, but he, had, he just had a very good game, all right? So it was against the Panthers, so that, I mean, he, the Panthers are kind of beaten up. However, he still showed that he can do something. There's a reason why you get a guy in the second round, get him to develop. There is a team that needs a quarterback desperately. It's the Bears, but it's also the Washington football team. And I think the Washington football team is more built to be trading up to get their quarterback right now. I'm going to be honest. I think the Washington football team could win a Super Bowl if they get one more weapon and a quarterback. That's it. Legitimately, they have an all-star defense. Need a safety. That's true. But they have an all-star defense. Now, we're going to be trading up. I don't know why I just went to NFC. Uh, but we're going to be trading up 
with the number 19 pick all the way up to number 13. Now, what are we going to be doing to do this? We could get a third round pick in there, right? Let's check out how the fourth round pick is. So we are probably going to be trading a fourth and a seventh. Let's see if the seventh actually works. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're going to be trading our third round pick, right? And could we get a seventh back? Maybe. Let's see if we can get a fifth round back. We're not going to do that. So we're going to be getting a sixth round back in return. So we're going to trade a first and a third for their first and sixth round because that gives you more value down the line. Teams do this all the time. It is what it is. So we're going to be seeing if this goes through because you guys are going to be going after a guy who, I mean, Mel Kuyper has like wet dreams over this dude. Trey Lance out of North Dakota State. We're having some lag. We're having some lag issues. Uh, don't know why, but that's okay. Uh, Trey Lance is coming in here. Uh, out of North Dakota State, I mean, this is, he has a high bust factor, but what better to pair him up with Ron Rivera? Like, there's nothing better than pairing him with a dude who drafted Cam... Well, he didn't draft... I'm, I'm not sure if he drafted Cam Newton. Check me on that. But a guy who was able to make the most out of a guy like Cam Newton. Uh, Trey Lance is going to be having his best shot in the NFL here. That's going to be key because the Bears would be looking for a quarterback there as well. Now the Washington football team able to use some of their draft capital because they don't need a tackle per se. That's going to be something that those guys fall. Maybe they could trade back and get some more draft capital then. They need their quarterback. Trey Lance could step in and do a very good job. Now Vikings, uh, y'all need your y'all need your guard. There, there's no there's no doubt about it. You do you need the interior offensive line lineman like no other. White Davis is kind of com he's competing with me, uh, like in my eyes with Trey Smith for this number one guard spot. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Kyle Pitts is not getting past fifteen. He's too good of a player to get past ten for Christ's sakes. He got past fifteen. It is what it is. Now the Bears Bears I always go tackle for you. I've seen how the draft board falls enough time to realize Kyle Trask is beyond a need. Kyle Trask is the pick. All right? Straight up, Kyle Trask is going to be the pick. He's been playing really well. Even against LSU's loss, he played really well. Jalen Waddle's falling, which is interesting. I don't think he should fall, but it is. It's happening. Uh, but Kyle Trask is an absolute beast. Now, Joseph Asai is going to be an amazing pick here for uh, the Raiders because you guys need some pass rush. Your defense is solid. You have young corners who are growing, developing. Your safety, you could use a free safety because the market joiners, A, my, I think got injured. I don't know how bad the injury is. But two, he is going to be coming up on contract here sometime soon. And he's expensive as fuck. So getting a guy like Joseph Asai is going to help out the secondary as well. Uh, the linebackers, I think they're perfectly fine. We're going to be straight up. I, you guys have a really good set of linebackers, even if they're not playing to their best ability. Now, the Ravens, you guys could be going for a Jalen Waddle here, but you guys want more of a big target to get open for... A guy like um, Lamar Jackson to be able to throw to, right? You want a separator. And Jalen Waddle could be that, but you kind of already have that in Hollywood Brown, right? You want a bigger dude. Rashad Bateman's what? In the six foot range, he's 6'1. So that might not be the place you go. You could be reaching for a Terrence Marshall Jr. However, there's a guy like Jalen Waddle up here, and there is a team like the Miami Dolphins that could use having Tua with his old buddy. So we are trading up with the Dolphins. With the Ravens, not interdivisional trade because those never work in this. So for the 18th pick, we are trading with our uh, first round pick as well. We're going to we're gonna see if uh, maybe this fourth round and maybe we can get a fifth in return. So it's unlikely that way. We just want to see if there's anything back. So we're going to be trading up with our fourth round and our first in order to be able to get the man himself, Jalen Waddle, a true weapon that this team could really use and be able to maximize all the potential because you invest into a you might as well get him his true weapon who shouldn't be this he shouldn't be falling this far now the broncos y'all fell y'all fell pretty far right you lost out on a lot of dudes who are like potential quarterbacks like kyle trask that's okay doesn't seem like a dude with a super cannon arm similar to what a guy like john elway would like now would you go edge here i don't think so there's a team right there in the cardinals that would be salivating to be able to get a guy like eric stokes and they ain't getting them. They ain't getting them. You guys need a cornerback like nobody's business. Oja Moutier, I'm sorry. I don't think he's going to be a true number one. And AJ Boye is dying. So Callahan's going to be a great slot, dude. Eric Stokes is going to be, he's rising up my board personally. He's been doing a really good job. So I like Eric Stokes a lot. He, I think he has two pick sixes on the year. So that's kind of a huge deal. Now, of course, Cardinals, uh, kind of an issue. There's not really too many more corners on the board. So this is a place where you can trade back. There are guys like Samuel Cosme on the board where teams could be trading up, right? But maybe maybe you don't want to take a chance on that, right? Let, let's go with the corner here because there are teams that could take corner like, of course, 
You got the Titans here who could take a corner. They're not going to. But you have a lot of teams here that potentially could take a corner. Darian Kendrick's going to be a great guy. He's going to sneak into the first. I mean, if AJ Terrell sneaks into the first, Darian Kendrick's going to sneak into the first. He's definitely a talented dude who's going to be a very good guy on the outside. Uh, but he's going to take over for where Pat Pete's going to be. Obviously, you have like a 35-year-old dude there already. So we're going to be rocking Darian Kendrick. Now, um, Ravens, this is where you get Terrence Marshall Jr. You're not going to let him fall and potentially have a team like the Saints trade up and be able to take a guy like Terrence Marshall Jr. He played lights out before he came out uh, and like opted out for the rest of the season. He showed that he's truly a number one wide receiver. He's your size. He's your speed. He's what you need. You guys can get pass rush later on. And uh, the t Titans. Why do I say the Titans? The Bucks. We we're so we always do this every time. J two Afele is gonna be sticking in right there. That is what she said. Um, J two Afele is gonna be the guy who goes there. You can't resign Dominican Sue, and you have a really strong defensive front. And Shaquille Barrett is the name that I've been straight up bugging on. Yes, take a shot every time I say bugging. He's the guy who I've been really messing up on his name for a while now. So I finally remember Shaquille Barrett. You guys should resign him. Let Dominican Sue go. He's a beast. Not sixteen million dollars a year beast. J2 Afeli is going to stick in there. Oh, God. And he's going to do a really good job. Now, Costanzo keeps getting injured. And then, I mean, the backup tackle, if good? I'm not sure about his actual last name. Uh, he has been getting injured as well. Okay, guys. Small detour. Had to clear up some space on my laptop. However, uh, you guys need a tackle like it's no one's business. Samuel Cosme, to me, is the best tackle in the entire class. Straight up best tackle in the entire class. So he's going to be stepping in. Uh, well, of course. We there's a star there. Penny Suwell is we don't need to talk about that. Samuel Cosme has been doing great in the run game, he's been doing great in the pass game. He and Christian Darasa are tied for like number two. And Samuel Cosme, I mean, I think he just fits this Colts line a little bit better. If Cos uh Costanzo retires, he's gonna fit in perfectly. If he stays in uh and decides to play another year, he's gonna be able to learn from him one more time as the computer fan starts to go off. Now, Titans, y'all do like y'all have three point eight million dollars of extra cap room, right? You have guys like Corey Davis to re-sign. You have Jayon Brown to re-sign. You ain't going to be able to sign Jadavian Clowney. Much as I love y'all and I want you guys to succeed, you aren't going to be able to do that unless you want to let them go and let Jeremiah Wusukamora come in. I don't think that's the right idea. Uh, JOK should be probably getting traded up for here. Uh, with the edge class being next, being Aziz Ojulari, I think that you might want to trade down. For a team that needs a linebacker like the Browns, the Browns, uh, again, we're doing interconference trading here, which is a little bit sketchy, but for the right price, anybody's willing to trade down. It's three spots, guys. It's three spots. So we're going to see how a five is going to be in. So it's likely we're going to trade. Um, we, we don't, the NFL doesn't like doing these two, like three pick trades. So we are going to be doing a first and fourth for the first round pick, just trading, uh, trading up a little bit to secure Jeremiah owusu Kamora, who is never here, ever. Jeremiah owusu Kamora is going to be such a beast on this team. Now the Jets, you have a guy like Rashad Bateman who's going to be able to be a really good compliment. Like, I mean a really good compliment to uh, to Denzel Mims. If Jamison Crowder is not going to be there next year, you're going to want a guy like Rashad Bateman to step into his shoes and fill that void. He's going to be a great option to pair up with uh, Denzel Mims. Now, Jags, uh, there's a guy like Christian Darasaw here. I don't think you need to pass up on that. Realistically, I don't think you need to pass up on that. Uh, it's just it's too good. I don't care who the hell you have there. Jawan Taylor, he, like, I don't care who he replaces. He is better than them. He has a higher ceiling. He has a higher floor. Christian Darasaw, excellent tackle. Should be gone in the first 20 picks, but is here. I think that's just amazing. Amazing. I heard Ryan, R Ryan, Rashawn Slater is projected as a center in the NFL. I don't vibe with that, but of course, I think that the Titans now could get a guy like Aziz Ojulari. I've been giving him Jason away. I don't know if he's going to be sneaking to the first. His athleticism very well might sneak him into the first. But Aziz Ojulari has the athleticism. He has the burst. He has everything you want for an edge player. I think that's going to be a great fit. And, of course, the Bills. Uh, Levi Wallace has been playing pretty damn well. So I think he might get a contract. Now, Darius Jackson, if I'm not mistaken, A, he's been pretty injury prone. He hasn't played too much, but he's playing pretty well. So do we need a cornerback here? No, not not too much. But I think that it's going to be a lot higher of a floor. If you don't want to sign Levi Wallace, get Sean Wade. He is worth a top 10 pick if you want him to be at slot corner. That's just the way it's going to roll. So we're going to definitely do that. And given the guys who are on the board right now, ooh, ooh. Aaron Rodgers, Chris Olave is a lot. He reminds me a lot of a guy like Devontae Adams. 
Same size, route running separator, really good, really good hands. Everything you really want from Chris Olave is going to be there. But Rondale Moore would be interesting. Aaron Rodgers is a cannon arm. He can get it down there all he wants. But I do kind of like the idea of Amon Ross St. Brown being uh, being there in the next round. However, screw Amon Ross St. Brown, right? Rondell Moore has an extremely high potential. He's just going to be a big threat. You want to get Aaron Rodgers some weapons. Stop him from being uh, from complaining about the fact that his organization doesn't care about him. Rondell Moore is the need. He is the pick. And um, you know what, Steelers? You could have traded up earlier. Steelers don't trade up unless there's a blue chip prospect who fell. At this spot, we all know that I don't think, like, you guys like to push back on this. You guys do not think that we are going to be letting go Alejandro Villa in the way. As much as I love him and his story, he's not been playing that great. And the line has been starting to get injured a lot more often. So I think a guy like Liam Eikenberg is going to be an amazing fit here. Been doing this a lot. Hasn't let up a sack since late 2018. That's huge. That's two years. Liam Eikenberg is going to be the pick. Notre Dame tackles. I mean, come on, guys. You see McGlinchey going, doing a pretty good job. Nelson doing a great job. Of course, Nelson's a guard. But Notre Dame knows what the hell they're doing. Now, Saints, you guys just lost your true, like, extreme speed weapon right there, right? That's kind of a problem. Now, could we get a linebacker? There's a good chance that we're getting a linebacker here. But there's guys who are, like, if you, there's teams that need tackles that are going to be wanting to get a tackle, right? And there's guys like Ryan, Rashawn Slater who are going to be good here, Elijah Vera Tucker. So this is a potential trade back spot. But then again, there's nobody really here that teams are going to be trading up for unless you want to go with a team like the Panthers moving up back into the first to select Zaven Collins, monster linebacker out of Tulsa. So we're gonna try to we're gonna try to finesse this pick. All right, we're we're not we're not trading with the Saints. Uh, where where are we at? We are going with the Panthers. Oh, it's interdivisional. So I apologize, guys. We're not gonna be doing that. Uh, as much as I excited you guys with that pick, it's not gonna happen. Uh, the that means unfortunately Zaven Collins is going to be going to <laughs> to the Saints. Big turnaround. Uh, of course he's gonna work really well with Sean Alexander. Sean Alexander. Uh, I, he's definitely not Sean Alexander, but he's going to be working well with Alexander and he's going to be doing a very good job. He has a very good mentorship there and uh, Demario Davis might still be there. However, he's getting older as well. Contracts are coming up. There's a reason why TDN prioritizes that snapback if you want to, but I think Zayvon Collins is going to be a really good defensive option. He's going to be able to help stuff the run as well. Uh, he's just an absolute beast. I think that he arguably could be almost as good as JOK and he's of course falling. Now, uh, the Kansas City, we already know where we're going here. There's a dude in Elijah Vera Tucker who's playing really good at guard and playing really well, of course, English. And he's going to be the pick here. Realistically, I don't think any team's going to trade back into the first to be able to pick Mac Jones. I don't think that's going to be, they're going to want to do that. So that's the draft. Uh, I tried to keep it not too many picks. I realized that, I'm sorry for scaring y'all with that pick. I was like, oh shit, it's interdivisional. It's never going to happen. So it is unfortunate, but it is the way it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, comment down below, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.